So what's really cool about Hack Motion is the feedback that I get from my students. They really like it. I tell them it's a watch, just put this watch on, calibrate it, boom, boom. I learned Hack Motion in less than 20 minutes. How many of you have Hack Motion? How many of, I should say how many of you don't have Hack Motion. Just get it. Did you hear what I just said? And they're not paying me a nickel. You can actually <coughs> learn this stuff in 15, 20 minutes. It's amazing. So, measuring the wrist motion in putting. So the assumption is, is that you know you shouldn't be using your wrists in putting, right? What's interesting is if you if you test different distances, you're going to start to see wrist sequencing appear. So let's write that down. Okay. Let's go ahead. And, what's the next slide? Um, slide guy. Yeah. So so the assumption is that we don't have any wrists. So. Ideally, what should these wrist graphs look like? Let's go to the next one. Okay. All right. That's not going to play my thing, huh? That's all right. All right. What would the wrist graphs ideally look like in putting? A dead person. Write that down. <laughs> Literally, right now. I'm serious. The graphs should look like a dead person. No flexion extension. No radial ulnar. And for you straight back, straight through people, zero rotation in space. But you're actually twisting which way? If I'm going this way, I'm actually turning everything the other way, okay? All right, so I think important in putting, it's very important that you test different distances. So let's write that down, please. I use 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot. And it's interesting what happens as we start to change distance. Next slide, please. Where, where's my slide guy? There he is. He's trying to go to the restroom and everything. All right. Don't leave. Okay, so, okay, we're going to go back to wrist school. All right, first of all, you need to understand something. Flexion, extension. So let's all do it. All right, flexion, extension. Very good. Now let's do it this way. Flexion, extension. Very good. Have we got that? All right, let's do radial and ulnar. Very good. All right? Okay, let's do it here in front of us, down here like this. Okay, very good. Now, the, axis, the long axis of the forearm is in relationship to the long, last, up, long axis of the upper arm. That is supination and pronation. Everybody got that? So it's not, so there's only two wrist motions. Everybody got that? Okay, we're cool. I woke everybody up. Next frame, please. Okay, so here we have on the left, Okay, I always tell people when we go green, we're doing flexion extension. What does that affect? That is the in-plane motion of the club, in the plane rotation. It's affecting loft. It's also affecting absolute rotation in space. So we got that? So let everybody change the loft. Come on. Okay, so what's the graph supposed to look like? Is it supposed to look like this, or is this supposed to look like a dead person? No. This is not your goal. Write that down. <clears throat> this is not your goal. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Did they get amen from the guy from England? What did you say? This is not your goal. <clears throat> Everybody got that? To zero this thing out. Because what if this golfer aims a degree and a half, a degree and a half left? Where are they going to be hitting it? Yeah, they're going to have to do something else. So you need to understand, we're going to start to learn to understand wrist sequences, okay? And I'm going to take you step one through step four. Everybody got that? Okay. All right, so let's kind of write this down. Wrist sequencing, you're dealing with what's the face of the dress? Is it aimed left? Is it neutral or is it open? What is the grip type? We, somebody asked a wonderful question with Brian. What happens when you change a grip? Ready? Write this down. You ready for this? what happens if you change the orientation of the grip. And we usually use the z-axis rotation for grip types. Everybody got that? <clears throat> there are certain grip types that are a disaster. Which ones do you think they are? Everybody do that. Yeah. It's a freaking disaster waiting to happen. It's the Titanic in punting. <laughs> Write it down. I'm serious. When you go... We, uh, Lead hand on top, trail hand rolled to the top, it's a disaster. Because as soon as you move the club in plane, it rotates in plane, what happens? It also goes about the shaft. Now the space is wide open. And the space is wide open, and what happens to the body? Yeah. Absolutely. You get it? 
Sure. All right, so when you're doing this, before you start looking at the cool stuff, make sure you look at the face, what's the grip type, and what is the face's orientation to, to the grip orientation? Is it closed face bias, open face bias, or neutral? And what's interesting is I used to let people hold the club any way I want them to. The more and more I studied the wrists, the more old school I get. What do I mean by that? I'm not talking about Chuck Taylors. I'm not talking about Jimmy Chitwood jerseys. What am I talking about old school? What's old school instruction? Thumbs on the top. No, no I'm talking about teach the grip. <laughs> Write it down. Every lesson I ever took in golf, we took a look at my grip. We took a look at my stance and my setup. The more and more I do wrist studies, the more and more I start changing people's thumb, short thumb, long thumb, index fingers, radial ulnar deviation, getting the right amount of extension, getting the right amount of supination, getting the right elbow flex, because you have to understand, it is a coordinative structure of all of it. The grip is all of it. It's not just your hand. Write that down, please. The grip is not just your hand. Everybody got that? Okay. All right, then, what is the order of movement? So here the hand is, okay, so we have, a, we have two joint movements, right, which are local. Write that down. And we have a segment rotation, which is the purple. Everybody got that? That is not pronation supination. That is the hand moving globally in space. Everybody move your hand globally in space. That's what the purple is. Okay, everybody, what's the green one? Come on, do the green one. Okay, do it with the trail hand though, because we're going to get a new sensor for that. <laughs> okay, give me the blue one with the trail hand. Okay, give me the blue one with the lead hand. Very good. Okay, got it. Okay, so what is the order of movement here? The hand starts what? Moving in space. Then what happens? There's a change in flexion, and then there's a change in, is it going more positive or more negative? Write that down. Because when I started learning from Doc Neal, I couldn't remember because his coordinate system was rotated this way. I'm like, mm -hmm. is the positive radial or on? Or is the... I, get... I couldn't figure it out. So I just started saying to myself, is the graph moving more positive or more negative? Please write that down. So he's going into flexion and what? Where's the club head going? In space, inside or outside? Yes. What do you think is going to be the response to the trail wrist on the downswing when the club's outside and open? You're going to under twist and go where? Everybody go with your trail wrist. Go, go add a little bit of loft, a little bit of towards flexion, and a little bit of ulnar. And look at your form and what's it doing? Yes, yeah, so two movements in those plane produce a movement in the third plane. It's actually circumduction. Yes? Look at Scott's like, yeah. See, I was teaching I was teaching him how to say your name last night. Yeah, good man. Cow. Cows. There you go. Got it. Nailed it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, another thing that I'd like to see is the speed, like you had on the full swing. Yeah. I want to see the speeds, the rates. That would be the next thing in the putting. Okay. Everybody got that? All right. Next, next frame. Okay. So, you guys ready for a story? True story. Most stories are lies. So, facts and... You know, Brad and I have been working together a lot this past year, five or six times. So Faxon goes to me, he goes, what are you doing? Because I've got to get out of here. This show's driving me crazy. I've got to go chill out. And uh, I said, dude, I said, I need to capture some, some of your wrist sequence. Oh, yeah. He goes, is that that hack motion thing? He goes, yeah, that's pretty cool. He goes, you like it? I said, yeah, I like it. So we get in there, and we're in the hotel room, hitting 10-footers to a water bottle. Okay? And I said, dude, we've got to capture some long putts. So this is no lie. We go out in the hallway. We're sitting there. Fax is getting his maximal ulnar deviation. By the way, I've never seen anybody with this much ulnar. And it's not from the calibration. It is literally, how many people have ever seen Brad's hands at a dress? Major ulnar. What's that do? It, it locks down all the little bones in your wrist. And he figured this out with no instruction that if I get my mo wrist the most ulnar, A, it stabilizes the rotation, right? But it makes the shaft arc in the transverse plane. Write that down. So if you get your hands too far uncocked, okay, and there's a certain method out there that's getting you this way, this way, this way, right? <laughs> Everybody with me? 
And for 19.95, you can cure your yips. Okay? Being too much ulnar deviation can be destructive as well. <clears throat> because how easy when the shaft is arcing in the transverse plane can that putter twist shut? That's what Paul Casey had when he came to see me. He had too much flexion, too much ulnar deviation getting close to the face and de-lofted. Everybody got that? Okay, so we're going to take a look. First, we look at the green. Let's Everybody say go green. Go green. Go green. So how much flexion extension is there? Not a lot. Everybody got that? Not a lot. All right, now, how much ulnar deviation is there? Okay, now, should I fix that? The guy's the top, top ten player of all time. Should I, should I make his grass look better? So that when we go blue, everybody say go blue. Go blue. Say go green. Go green. All right, Michigan, go blue. We got any Wolverines in here? There you go. All right, now, here, what is making that shaft arc too much? The ulnar deviation is making it arc too much. Everybody got that? So you can get too much ulnar, and you can get movements towards radial. Does he aim right? Yes, of course he does. Yeah, good putters aim right. Okay? But they don't always go ulnar. Now. Hey, Dave, why does the graph look just like it's zero starting out at, say, in minus 37? Uh, great question. Because it's relative. It's relative. To add to your... Wherever he is at address. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a difference between full swing and putting. In putting, we, since there is very slight wrist motion, if you just do the absolute value, it would be like three degrees. It would look completely straight. So, in the, so what I want you to do when you're looking at putting is I want you to look here first. Why? Why do I want to look at flexion extension first? Why? Because it's the main rotation, it's the main torque, it's the in-plane motion. So look at the flexion extension first, then you're looking down the line, you're going, gosh, this thing's arcing like a lot. Now we're looking for out-of-plane movements. So everybody go, radio ulnar, come on. Everybody say path and spot. Very good. Let's do it with the trail wrist. Path and spot. Very good. Now, it's easy to look at the wrist graph in a, in, by itself. So you go, okay, he's going flexion ulnar. No, he's not going flexion then ulnar. We have to put the two graphs together. Everybody got that? So he's going, he's not really flexing much, but he is going what? And what's that doing to the form? It's turning it. He's not trying to supinate it, to, to supinate it. But he is going a little bit inside and under, right? All right, so what is the club now? Shut. It's been twisted shut, not on purpose. Write that down. The wrist sequence can cause twisting without the player even knowing. This was Paul Casey. <coughs> Paul Casey said to me, he goes, I cannot make a right-to-left putt. How far to the right would he have to go with his path? Huh? He goes, but when I hit an uphill left to right putt, it's short. What's he doing with the launch? Driving it. Yeah, he's driving it. According to track man, it's two bounces. Yeah. Yeah, so now you, you get, so when do I change, when do I change? So what does Brad do? He starts working back, back towards, right? He's working back towards neutral, right? Paul and Rory don't, don't move back towards neutral. Rory goes like this and stays there almost. So where's that face? What's he do with the lead arm? Everybody, let's do that. Let's go D-loft to there. Everybody go Rory. Okay, now get, it's a little twisted shot. Come on. Now take your lead arm and do that. That's why Rory does that. So he never matches up the wrist sequence in the, arm, the forearm motion to get it back to neutral. You get it now? So him and Paul struggle with Launch. Everybody got that? All right, so now you put them together. What's that? How long was that putt that you had on? Uh, ten, it was 10 feet. How do I know? Five, five degrees of rotation. When we went under the, we went under the cart, it was like 12. <laughs> Much bigger. So I do measure 10, I do 10, 20, 30. Everybody got that? If you want to try more, great, go for it. 
All right, then you put the graphs together, and then notice that I reversed this. I said, okay, I go, it's moving from ulnar to radial. Everybody say, moving, moving. from ulnar to radial. Everybody say, moving from radial to ulnar. So if I'm going from ulnar to radial, where would the stripe tend to be, as long as I'm not doing something weird with my body in the radius? Heel strikes. Heel strikes go with ulnar radial. Toe strikes go with radial ulnar. Write that down and pass, swiping to the left. Does anybody have any kids? Is anybody still a kid? Okay, you remember Dora, the explorer? Sure. Remember the fox's name? The swiper. Swiper. Swiper, no swiping. So every time I see this, Patrick Reed, Patrick Reed, Ernie Els are all under twisters. They're all swipers. That's why they put only good on fast, fast, fast drains. So what's cool is now you're starting to understand we look at flexion extension first, why? It's the main mover in the plane. Radial ulnar or ulnar radial, right, is the out of plane and can cause <coughs> twisting about the shaft. Everybody get it? So how important are the hands? So now you put the two graphs together so that you can see the sequence of the motion and then you can start to mimic it. And I think it's important for you as a teacher to mimic that motion. I think Brian said something along that line, didn't he? And it will really give you a good understanding. And then we add the rotation in there last, okay? So this is actually a really good, I would say this is a compatible wrist sequence with what Brad does. Okay, but it might not be a compatible wrist sequence with what Patrick Reed does. Or Ernie L's. Matter of fact, I know, remember when Ernie had the yips like and he had nine putts on hole number one? Yes. That's because somebody was trying to change his wrist sequence to get him to release the putter more. Because putting's not easy. You guys like stories? <laughs> All right, so Foley and I, <laughs> we're going down back nine, Thunder Bear. Everybody know who Thunder Bear is? Tor Born Olds. Okay. Foley goes, you know what? It's deep. He goes, Rosie misses the drive, or fairway, no big deal. Rosie misses the green. <laughs> No big deal, right? Rosie missed a four-footer, that's a big deal, and that's your job, not mine. That's what he said. <laughs> Putting is the most difficult job on the PGA Tour. Why? So many variables. There's so many variables. We have to hole out, and we're dealing with just little... Could you imagine on a left or right putt if you're like 0 0.8 degrees open with a face? Do you have a chance? No, but if that face is a degree closed, do you have a chance? Yeah, so putting's a really hard job. It really is. <laughs> All right, this is a disaster. What do we see here? This player's going into extension and radial, correct? Because of the butt of the club is being lifted too high by the lead forearm, and the trail arm and the trail shoulder are elevating. Everybody go back like this. No, 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 with extension. Yes, this is a disaster. Why is the attack angle of the hand path down, but the putter head attack angle is leveled to slightly moving up? It's a disaster. These are people that think they need to rock the shoulders and they're trying to be a pendulum. That's what they look like. Next frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is the brush stroke, the old school. Everybody give me a little low, high, flex. Yeah, a yeah, little brush here. Everybody brush up on it. That's what that looks like. Sure. All right? So you have to watch what the forearms are doing. Write this down. This is, you have to watch the segment motion of the forearm, and you're going, oh my gosh, that's how that player is getting extension. Take your lead forearm and lift it. You're already into extension, and you didn't even try to do this. Okay, now let's go low high. Yep. Did we see it? The wrist extension changes. All right, good. Now, next one, please. <coughs> All right, so here's a before and after. Here's a corn fairy tour player that came to me. I'm struggling with my speed, but I got great touch. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you got great speed, but I'm struggling with my touch. And he says, I only putt good on fast greens. Everybody can say that. So without changing the wrist sequence, 
what did I do? I quieted it down. So his launch became a little bit more consistent. Now this is huge. When should the wrist sequencing take place? When should there be wrists in the stroke? Right where? In the transition. Mm -hmm. Write that down. Great players have wrist motion in the transition, not at impact. The hacker has wrist motion probably everywhere. All right, next one, please. Okay, see, I told you I can slam this door shut fast. Absolute values vary from calibration to calibration. Absolute values vary from player to player. Study the graphs of individual wrist motion first, then all together. Test wrist motion from varying distances. Please do it from varying distances. James, you do it from different distances with chips and pitches, correct? <clears throat> All right, now, no one, uh-oh, ready for this? No one so far, as I said so far, <laughs> had zero wrist motion from all three dis distance tested. No one so far. But yet, we're telling no wrists, <clears throat> right? Now, I'm not saying be wristy, but understand that a certain amount is very beneficial. Some of it's just from the inertia of the club. <clears throat> Minimal to no wrist action motion from less than 10 feet only. Can you please write that down? I've had players on the biofeedback, bio and we're at 30 feet, and they're just maintaining, and I'm like, I can't hit it. Like, of course you can't hit it, because there's no loading of the club. There's, you, okay, so don't be sitting there going from 30 feet. We've got to get that flat line graph. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. All right, certain wrist sequences are very compatible and functional. Transition wrist motion is very functional in certain stroke patterns. If I got, uh, Phil Canyon's a good friend of mine, he tried to get rid of my transition wrist sequence. And if I told him, I said, Phil, I can't get to the hole. I can't hit it. I got nothing. There's certain players that like to feel the inertia of the club, and sometimes the inertia of the club in that transition is what's causing the wrist motion. All right? <coughs> Any questions? Like one question? I think uh, maybe no. afterwards we'll have like a networking no. and refreshments because Scott has also half an hour. We have quite a tight Did schedule. Did I take up your half hour? But uh, well, I got started it late. It was a great presentation, and I think David probably is going to be around. Like if somebody. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>